Aloha and good afternoon. My name is Jürgen Steinmetz, joining you from Hawaii News Online and Etobo News in Honolulu. And with me is Dr. Peter Talo. Uh, he's in College Station, Texas. And we're going to give you a summary of today's uh, news headlines. And <clears throat> I have some interesting Even updates for you. Point. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Hi, and Peter. I How's uh, it's, it's actually very nice and sunny here in Hawaii today after we had a few days of rain. Yes. And uh, so the pictures you, see, you saw running yesterday on e News about the catastrophic floods, um, they seem to be far away today. Starting a nonstop service on Hawaiian Airlines between Honolulu and Orlando, Florida. And the East Coast, even in best times, was never a major top market for the U.S. Yes, we do have two non-stops to New York, one on Hawaiian and one on United. And we have another Hawaiian Airlines non-stop to Boston. But adding Orlando is um, quite brave, I would say. And we're going to find out more after meeting the CEO of Hawaiian Airlines and the governor. <clears throat> this will be part of this broadcast. Yeah. So you can hear how this is coming uh, coming together. You think the reason uh, for that is they want to be more involved with Disney World? Or they want to skip the California West Coast, in other words, and and um, it's a long flight from Honolulu to Orlando. It's not going to be a comfortable flight with a mask on, but uh, of course, Florida is open. Florida was the first state to be really open, and um, the economy in Florida is booming. Uh, I wonder if um, you know the Hawaiians are going to Florida, maybe to get away from this? Well, I don't think we're, we're too much about um, Hawaiians going someplace. I think it's the other way around. Well, Hawaii is looking for tourists. And and I think this may be an opportunity they haven't thought about. Kind of remote, maybe both, both way travel is fine. People love Disney World, of course, and Disneyland. And uh, there could be a, maybe it's also an attempt to get traffic away from Caribbean destinations. Hawaii is now competing. Our tourism numbers are way down and everyone is competing uh, very hard. So this could be another reason. Um, and hopefully we'll find out more today. Well, Hawaii has some advantages over the Caribbean. It's clearly um, English speaking. And for Americans, we don't need a passport to go to Hawaii, which um, means that you don't have some of the problems of international travel. Um, of course, the Caribbean is closer to the big population centers on the East Coast. But um, the other thing is that California, which is doing so poorly, and um, I don't think this, um, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Disneyland is still closed or semi-closed. And so Orlando is really the other side of the Disney World, Disneyland uh, uh, spectrum, we might say. And of course, there's huge numbers, not only Disney World in Orlando, but lots of other theme parks. I mean, Orlando is theme park city. So um, may, I'm wondering if they're hoping to bring people in from Asia, in other words, stop in Hawaii and then from Hawaii go on to uh, Orlando. I don't know, I'm just trying to think that through. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. Of course, right now at this moment, there are no flights to Asia from here. It's still COVID times with some very rare exceptions, and I'm not even aware if these exceptions are still operating. Uh, but in the future, this could be an interesting thought to combine Hawaii with a vacation in the theme parks in Florida. So uh, interesting idea. Well, go represent us at the airport in Hawaii and try not to get sick and wear your Aloha shirt like me and know that uh, while I will not be in Hawaii, I'll be in College Station, Texas, I'll be with you all in spirit. All right, Peter. Okay, bye you bye. take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. to recognize at this time, uh, to share a few thoughts with you. 
my pleasure to introduce our president and CEO of Hawaiian Airlines, Mr. Peter Ingram. Mahalo, Debbie. Aloha, everyone. Uh, on, on behalf of all of us at Hawaiian Airlines, uh, it is uh, really special for me to welcome you all here to join us as we celebrate our inaugural flight to Orlando, Florida. This, uh, this new service uh, really marks a, a significant time for our airline. And, and I've noticed you know, throughout the past week, all of the talk in the media, has, or much of the talk in the media has been about the, the news of the anniversary of the declaration of a pandemic and so many of the challenges that we have faced in the past year. It's really uplifting for me personally, uh, and I'm sure for our airport team and the crew operating the flight today, to not only be able to be starting to restore service, but to welcome uh, guests like you today to a new nonstop market from Honolulu Airport to Orlando, Florida. We are, we are grateful um, to um, the state of Hawaii, all the partners we work with, and the people of Hawaii for everything they have done uh, to maintain Hawaii as a safe destination, which is critical to allow us to rebuild the tourism industry. Uh, and we're excited to embark on this new chapter uh, flying service to the Sunshine State uh, from the Aloha State, uh, which will be the first ever scheduled flight from uh, Hawaii to Florida. Um, uh, Orlando is a city we've uh, we've had our eyes on for uh, for quite a while. Um, we're pleased to um, not only be welcoming visitors from uh, from another destination on the eastern U.S., but also to offer a new place for our Kamaina travelers because we know this is a very popular place for visitation as well. And and our Hawaii people like to travel, and I know that that includes so many of you today who are excited to get a nonstop flight to Orlando. Uh, this is our third destination now in the eastern U.S., uh, following additions in recent years of Boston and New York, and the first city in the southeast uh, U.S. to join our network. And over the next few weeks, we've got some other additions coming, including new service to Ontario, California, and Austin, Texas, coming next month. Uh, as we prepare to board today's flight, I want to recognize and thank our, our airport team, uh, our folks working on the ground, the in-flight crew, and the pilots who are going to operate today's flight, who have worked tirelessly to welcome you all and uh, welcome you today safely. Uh, and finally, I'd like to, uh, to thank Governor Ige for joining us today to mark this special occasion and uh, welcome him to say a few words. Uh, mahalo to all of you for making this new room possible and have a safe and enjoyable time when you're in Orlando. Aloha. 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 Uh, thank you, Peter, for that kind introduction and the opportunity to speak to all of you as we welcome the first ever nonstop flight from Hawaii to Florida. Um, flight 86 represents not only the entry of a Hawaii carrier into the second largest U.S. market, it rep represents increased opportunities for our residents like all of you to travel and experience the popular Orlando attractions and the national sport sporting competitions for Kamainas. While we are celebrating this bold move by one of our premier local businesses, I must also address the pandemic and air travel. We will continue to be vigilant in our safe travels program, and Hawaiian Airlines continues to be a vital, trusted partner with the state of Hawaii to ensure safe air travel for all. We continually assess our travel policies to keep communities safe as we work on economic recovery. Hawaiian's nonstop service between Honolulu and Orlando will provide geographic diversification 
and grow in fostering their opportunities. This will be a big step in increasing revenues for the state and getting our community members back to work. Hawaii continues to have the lowest rate of COVID infections and the lowest death rate in the country. And we are all getting better at knowing what actions we need to take to keep our community safe. Wear, wear our masks, wash our hands, and maintain our distance. I'm thankful for all of the residents here who will be on this uh, inaugural flight to Orlando. I want to thank you for making the sacrifices to continue to keep Hawaii safe uh, and really appreciate all of you. I would like to take this opportunity to also thank Hawaiian Airlines for taking this bold step in expanding service so that our Kamaina have the opportunity to safely travel around the United States. COVID has changed Hawaii, but I embrace this move by Hawaiian Airlines to safely grow the visitor industry and to help those in our community that are struggling. We need to get people back to work. We want our travelers to be responsible and wear their masks. We want our friends and family to be able to safely gather and travel. Mahalo again to Peter and the entire Hawaiian Airlines Ohana for bringing this exciting new air travel choice uh, to our residents and visitors alike. May all your roads grow and be successful. Thank you. Governor and Peter, for those uh, fine remarks to put us in this place of gratitude and appreciation, um, and as the governor mentioned, to be safe. So while we start preparing to board, be mindful of your distance, be mindful of each other, and to, you know, take care and again, be aware of your surroundings. One of the traditions, besides hula and music, when we send off a new aircraft or a new flight is to do a blessing. It too is a tradition at Hawaiian Airlines and it gives me great privilege to introduce one of our, our own Hawaiian Airlines employees who has um, gone to the, the ranks of retirement and is now off on a new tangent and a new path. He will be conducting our blessing today Kiwani Martin. I'd like to say that e hui pu ana kako i ke ia la no ka hoopu mai kai no ke ia kaulana la. We are here today for the blessing, of course, of joining two cities, connecting them with aloha and hoopipa. And as is custom with Hawaiian Airlines, the music and the gathering. We, of course, use the elements known to our islands. As you see the Maile Le over there, the Maile is the connection between the heavens and earth. We also use the Hawaiian salt, the Pa'akai. And the Pa'akai is, of course, used to preserve all the energy and to preserve all the goodness. And also, we use the water, the water to purify. And we, of course, all together, we want to make sure that there is purification and multitudes of blessings for this route so that Hawaii, Hawaiian Airlines together can be Ho'ovai Vai. Yeah? Can you say Ho'ovai Vai? Ho'ovai Vai. That means prosperous. 
right? We have to holomua, move forward already. And you know, as Mr. Ingram had mentioned earlier, you know, the reason why we use the mileage is because it takes many people, many hands, to put together this beautiful day. And he has acknowledged the many hands from the executive level to airport operations and the crew that make it possible for today. But of course, I think I join a lot of people in saying, mahalo to you, Peter, and to our governor, you know, to helping us move forward and to bring back such a joyous occasion. So I want to ask you folks to come follow me to the Miley and we're going to make the blessing. Kaya po ang manawa, kaya po aloha. E ho po ba'y kahi ana, kay iya le maile. Do kavehe ana, do kay iya ala hele ho. Ma kay iya kulaga po hale o honolulu. Ay, vehe ana, vehe ana ke ala hele ho. Thank you. Mahalo. Mahalo again for joining us today on this very exciting day of our inaugural flight to Orlando from Honolulu. Uh, we will leave you in the care of the grace and the hospitality of both our guest services that will be starting boarding soon, as well as our flight crews that will be taking care of you on your flight. Keep our guests and keep our crew members safe and healthy in their, their journeys. Thank you. Could you address the fact that um, for U.S. Airlines, and with that, we are now at a point where we can confirm uh, that we will not be furloughing any employees any earlier than September. And our hope is that this is going to give us time to uh, to grow and continue to rebuild as we see visitors uh, beginning to come more to Hawaii, and, and we will be able to to move beyond furloughs uh, indefinitely and and really start a new era growing for Hawaiian Airlines. And um, tell us a little bit about how important the significance is of adding a flight to Florida and to the Southeast expanding that eastern network. Um, one of the things that we're aware of is that the uh, the depth of some of our traditional markets isn't going to come back to 100% fully. So this gives us an opportunity to broaden our network and reach out to new visitors. Orlando in particular is exciting because um, we have demand not only from the Orlando area and the Tampa area, but also from people here in Hawaii who enjoy traveling to Orlando for all the visitor attractions that it has to offer. Orlando is not an airline hub like Atlanta or Chicago or anything like that. So you expect the traffic to specifically come between Orlando and Honolulu? Or are you also competing or getting people to travel to Hawaii instead of the Caribbean or Bahamas, what's right at the door? We expect most of the traffic to originate either in Central Florida or in Hawaii. Without, with, There will be some connections, but it'll be limited. But I mean, your target in Florida, in Central Florida, is, um, is the idea also to get people from Florida to think about Hawaii over thinking about going to Jamaica or to some other to a Caribbean destination? I think for us it's more of a compliment if you the part of the reason we were attracted to Orlando is that there already is a lot of demand that comes on connecting services today typically when you add an on-stop service we um, we not only get that some of that demand but we also stimulate new demand because it is more convenient for people to travel non-stop so we think that's where most of the traffic will come from from the revenue point flights to Orlando between Honolulu and Orlando has been quite cheap compared to flights Honolulu to Washington, for example, or even New York. Um, and uh, I mean, I've seen it myself. You can buy a ticket on United via Washington or Newark to Orlando for a lot less money than just going to Orlando. Um, is this a risk you're taking with the low fares in place or will this change after or has it changed? I, I think we're going to have very competitive service and we will uh, we will price according to uh, the market and we believe we're offering people new travel options and we'll be able to price competitively 
as we have when we've added service to places like Boston and New York. So most of our travelers, given the nature of our network, are leisure travelers, and the vast majority of it is independent. I think it's going to take a while before we get um, business travel back, which isn't significant for Hawaii, but there is some when you think of conventions and group travel. I think it's going to be a while before that traffic comes back. But there's a lot of pent up demand from people who uh, want to travel for leisure and are looking to get away. Uh, they've been cooped up in their homes uh, for a long time in the past year and people are really looking for places where they can go, especially go safely. And, and we offer um, the fact that we've been very successful here in Hawaii of controlling the virus and I think that's going to appeal to a lot of people when they're thinking about where they want to go. And to maintain successful with the virus, from California there are approved vaccination, or not vaccination, test facilities uh, where people need to go and get a test before they come to Hawaii. Now there are rapid tests. I know your own airline is providing this at some airlines. How, how would this be handled in Florida? Uh, the same rules apply for the, the Florida flights as do all our flights. That, that To avoid quarantine, you need to have a PCR test within 72 hours. And, and we will work as we have in other locations to make sure that there are testing options available people, so people can get those tests before they travel. What about what some airlines specifically in the uh, Middle East, uh, I'm talking about specifically Qatar, Etihad, and Emirates are doing, requiring a, a rapid test. And I heard Lufthansa is going to be along this line now. Um, right before they board a flight, where you get results pretty much instantly as a second assurance. Is this going to be a plan altogether for your airline? So we, we think that the safe travels protocols have been very, very successful. Uh, we really, uh, even as we've seen an increase in visitors since September 15th, we haven't seen a uh, significant spike in cases and certainly not a spike in travel-related cases. So we think the 72-hour test plan is working and it has proven to work and, and um, we're, we're going to reinforce that protocol and make sure our travelers know about that before they get on our flights. But you don't... Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, there's just talk about uh, vaccination passports now and there, there has been some talk about that and potentially either having a vaccination So I think, you know, we're not the policy makers. I think there's been a lot of discussion about whether proof of vaccination, completing the vaccination protocol should exempt people from testing. Right now, that's not the rule for Hawaii. Right now, that's not the, um, the guidance that the CDC has laid out more generally. Uh, but I think when the CDC laid it out their initial guidance for people who were vaccinated the other day, they said they're going to continue to evolve and expand that guidance and they'll be guided by science and data. And we welcome that. And I, I think, um, you, you know, as people understand how travel is safe, and particularly air travel with all the protocols that we've put in place, and we learn more about how people with vaccines uh, are um, their susceptibility to carrying the virus. I, I think it would be a great alternative for people to be able to use that as a, uh, an alternative to getting a test. But I leave that to the policy makers to decide how that, how and when that's ultimately implemented. Sorry, Sorry quick picture with the pilots. Yeah, we'll come back. Okay. <laughs>